Welcome to Tessie and Tuesday. Uh, so today I'm gonna jump straight in. I just wanna um, I wanna talk about what it means to trust God, and I wanna start off by reading Joshua, Joshua one verse eight. Um, okay, I'm using a different Bible, so <clears throat> let me just gather my loins. Uh, Okay, Joshua 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you will observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. What version is this? New King James! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, so I googled what it means, what the word trust means, right? And um, in the dictionary, it says that it's a firm belief on the reliability, the truth, and the ability of something or someone. So the reliability, the, the firm belief in the reliability, the truth, and the ability of something or someone. So reliability, right, means that somebody who has proven to, to keep to their word, right, you know that what they say, like there's no, there's no um, way around it, it is true. The God who is the same today, yesterday and tomorrow, right, or forever. Truth is something that can't be disproved, right, it's something that, that holds, um, integrity within it if you have belief in somebody's ability you believe that they will be able to do um the what they have been known to be reliable to do and the truth of what they say they that they will do or what they are right so when you believe in their ability you believe that what they can you believe that they are able to do. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think, ask, or um, imagine. I think imagine is my own thing. But, um, so trusting God is believing, is a firm belief that he is the same. He was the same yesterday as he is today that he will be forevermore. It's believing that even if you are in a circumstance where it seems like, God, I can't trust you. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You think back to yesterday and you think, but God, you came through for the people who needed you in Israel and manna fell down for them when they needed you most and they were hungry and crying out to you. So I know that, that right now where I feel like I am suffering, you will be able to provide for me. You will be able to, um, you will be able to, you will be able by your power to rain down manna for me in heaven, right? Pay off my, my debts, pay off my school fees because you are God and you are reliable. And I know that right now they want to kick me out of school. They want to kick me out of my place. But God, you are a reliable God and you are able because your promises are true. So I trust you. <clears throat> So when I trust God, then it means that I know God, because how do you know that somebody is reliable if you don't know them? How do you know that somebody is capable and somebody is truthful if you don't know them? So when you trust God, it comes from a place of knowing God. Trusting God comes from knowing God. And um, in, John, in John 1 verse 1, it says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So when you trust, when you trust God, you trust, you know the word, you know him through the word, you know that no matter, no matter the circumstance, no matter the doubt that I am facing, God is above that doubt. God is still true, even above that doubt. God is, will still fulfill his promises, even when I feel like, oh, his plans in Jeremiah, it says that he has plans 
for a future and a hope. But right now, I feel very hopeless in this situation. But God said that he has a future and a hope for me. So even in this hopelessness, I'm going to say, God, I trust you. And God, I'm placing my fear and doubt away. I'm taking up your yoke because it is light. My burden is heavy, but your yoke is light. So I am hoping in you and in your truth. In my own way, I, I do not have hope. I am hopeless, but I am hoping in you. So trusting God is knowing God. And if you have a relationship with him through the word, by meditating on the word, in Joshua, the scripture that we read, the verses before. No, I think it's the same verse that we read. It said, meditate on, <laughs> meditate on it day and night. The reason for that is so that you can get to know God because he is the word. Jesus Christ is the word, as we read in John 1, that he is the word. So if you want to get to know God, you get to know him by knowing the word, by reading your Bible, meditating on it day and night, learning about who he's been through all of these people that they are talking about through all of these accounts and or you can even just go straight for um the letters written and read especially in john john is where jesus spoke the most and and well the gospels the gospels you just look for um you look for all all the letters written and read and you just learn about the teachings of God and you learn what he said, how he responded to um, situations that seem to, that will make others react in a different way or in a way of giving up, right? You learn from him by that and you learn his ways and then you imitate his ways. So trusting God means having a relationship with him, having a relationship with God, right? The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, your counselor, your guide, your advocate. So the Holy Spirit is the one who will order your steps, right? The one who will guide you, right? He will order your steps when you are feeling like <gasps> choked up by a decision. You will know that you will know what decision to make because you know the Holy Spirit, because you fellowship with the Holy Spirit and he won't let you go. He is omnipresent. He's always there, always available to give you a helping hand in times of trouble. When you just look to the Holy Spirit, search within your heart and say, Holy Spirit, what do I do? I'm stuck right now. I need to make a decision now. Your heart, if you are in right standing with God, please be careful only if you are in right standing with god and you have a relationship with the holy spirit and god abides jesus abides within your heart then you will not make a wrong decision because you if you are listening if you are listening to the holy spirit you will search within your heart and um he will lead you into the right decision you will feel that this is the wrong decision if you're about to make a wrong decision because god is faithful he says that he is our guide. He's leaving us when he was leaving Jesus. He said that I will leave you with a helper. So if you can remember um, the kings in Israel, right? Um, Jerusalem. So whenever they were in battle, they would always go and inquire of the Lord if um, what they need to do. And once they get the word from God and proceed according to his word, then they would win, win the battle. Each time they would win the battle, except for when they have, um, they have not inquired of God or they have not been obedient to God. So <clears throat> in trusting God, it is having faith that what he says, you will wait on his word. You wait on his word before you move, before you, you enter into a territory, before you possess a certain territory. You, you wait on him. You wait on him. You trust. So trusting God is having faith. In God within that relationship you have faith with him it is not enough to just say the salvation prayer and think that's it because faith without works is dead is dead so when you say that prayer it says in John 6 44 that um, nobody can come to me except if the father calls him to me right so when the father the father calls gives you a desire right he gives you a desire to 
believe in the Lord or to search about the Lord, to be curious in a sense, um, for lack of a better better word, um, of, about Jesus Christ. And then you heed to that, you respond to it, and you say your salvation prayer, you believe, you start to read in the word, and you grow in your faith because Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. And he can only grow your faith the more that you are spending time with him in the word. If you stay, if you say your salvation prayer and then you continue living life without a relationship with God, he will say, move away from, from me for I do not know you at the judgment day. So having trust in God is having faith in God because when you have faith in God, you know that his promises are true. You know that he will fulfill his word and you know that he is righteous above what your unrighteousness and that he is faithful above your unfaithfulness. So, so I just want to encourage you guys to trust in God, to not um, feed into what's happening around you, especially in South Africa, and believe that the world, the, the country has come to a doom because God is faithful. If we pray, if we trust in him, he will fulfill his word. He will give us the best of the land. Let us just dedicate South Africa to Jesus Christ and pray, 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 pray without ceasing. Okay, may God bless you all and keep you and prosper you as you trust him and help you not to grow weary and not to love him with passion, but to love him because you know who he is and because you want to, to continue to grow in him and to learn more about him and never to lose your desire for him. Okay, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.